Hello, everyone. Welcome to phase 5 of the Pico series tutorial, UART. In the last phase, we read the pin voltage and the on-chip temperature with ADC and the internal temperature sensor, which successfully changed the analog signal to the digital signal. By now, we've learned about PWM and ADC, which lay the groundwork for us to use Pico in different situations. In this phase, we need to learn how the MCU speaks. If you want the MCU to speak, you must stipulate certain rules or grammar. Just like human languages are divided into Chinese, English, German and so on. Of course, when two people speak, they also need to specify the same language. If the languages used by the two people are not the same, they cannot communicate. Similarly, if the MCU wants to speak, it needs to comply with certain rules, which we call communication protocols. The most common communication protocols in MCU are UART, I squared C, and SPI. Most of the MCUs on the market now have corresponding hardware peripherals. Why do we emphasize hardware peripherals here? Because these communication protocols are relatively simple. We can also simulate these communication protocols through software to realize the function of communication. Today, let's talk about UART, which is called Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. It is also commonly known as the serial port, which is a general serial and asynchronous communication protocol, which defines two data lines, which can realize full duplex transmission and reception. I have already said a lot of nouns just now, maybe you are confused. <laughs> Here we explain the meaning of a few nouns. Serial is used to describe a communication method that transmits one bit of metadata at a time, while parallel is used to describe a communication method that transmits multiple bits of metadata at a time. Asynchronous means that both parties do not need a common clock, that is, the receiver does not know when the sender sends. Therefore, in the sent information, the receiver needs to be prompted to start receiving the information, such as start bit, and stop bit is required at the end. The word corresponding to asynchronous is synchronous. It means that both parties have a common clock, which is often provided by the host or the same clock source. Full duplex, a term in communication transmission, and its counterparts are half duplex and simplex. Full duplex means that communication allows data to be transmitted in both directions simultaneously. Half duplex means that communication allows data in both directions but cannot be transmitted at the same time. Simplex means that communication allows data to flow in one direction. The working principle of UART is to agree on the BOD law of communication, and then transmit the data bit by bit. Now we see the timing diagram of the UART, where the meaning of each bit is as follows. 1. Start bit. First initiate a logic zero signal, indicating the beginning of the transmission character. 2. Data bit. Immediately after the start bit. The number of data bits can be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc forming a character, often using ASCII code, starting from the lowest bit, and positioning by the clock. 3. Parity bit. After adding this bit to the data bit, the number of ones is even, even check, or odd, odd check, to verify the correctness of data transmission. 4. Stop bit. It is a stop mark for character data. The stop bit can be the high level of 1 bit, 1.5 bits, 2 bits. Since the data is timed on the transmission line, and each device has its own clock, it is likely that there will be a small out of sync between the two devices during the communication process. So the stop bit not only indicates the end of the transfer, but also provides an opportunity to correct the clock. The more stop bits, the more tolerance for different clock synchronizations, but the slower the data transfer rate. 5. Idle bit, in the state of logic 1, indicating that there is no data transmission on the current line. Another important parameter of UART is the baud rate, which is an indicator to measure the data transmission rate, indicating the number of symbols transmitted per second. For example, every 8-bit represents a symbol, the data transmission rate is 1200 characters slash s, the baud rate is 1200 baud, and the bit rate is 1200 times 8 equals 9600 bit slash s. It's easy to get the two concepts wrong. Now let's learn about the UART parameter of RP2040. 1.send and receive the independent FIFO. 2.programmable baud rate generator. 
Three dot standard asynchronous communication bits are added when sending and removed when receiving. Four, line break detection. Five, programmable serial interface five, six, seven or eight bits. Six, one or two stop bits. Seven, programmable hardware flow control. Hardware flow control adds two pins RTS and CTS. RTS is an output signal, used to indicate that the device is ready to receive data and low active. CTS is an input signal, used to judge whether data can be sent to the other party and low active. Why add these two flow control pins? Because when two devices communicate through serial port, the processing speed of the two is different, which may cause data loss. For example, in the communication between the desktop computer and the single chip microcomputer, the receiving data buffer of the receiving end is full, and the sent data is also received at this time, which may cause loss. After using flow control, this situation can be effectively avoided. Now we can see the block diagram provided by the official. Is everyone confused at first glance? That's okay, we'll organize it into a flow chart. Here we divide it into two flow charts, namely the sending flow chart and the receiving flow chart. One thing to note here, we said earlier that UART is full duplex, indicating that reception and transmission can be performed at the same time. Here we divide it into two flow charts for better understanding. Now we see the transmit flow chart. The APB bus can access the status control register and store the information that needs to be transmitted into the transmit FIFO memory. The baud rate generator takes the baud rate divider factor from the APB bus and the register block and generates the internal clock, baud 16, with a frequency of 16 times the baud rate. The UART transmitter is controlled by the status slash control register and uses baud 16 as the clock source to transmit the contents of the transmit FIFO memory one by one. The FIFO status and interrupt generator will generate corresponding FIFO flags and interrupt signals according to the FIFO memory. Now we see the receiving flow chart. The UART receiver is the same as the UART transmitter. It is controlled by the status slash control register. With bottle 16 as the clock source, the received information is stored in the receive FIFO. The APB bus can obtain the read value by reading the receive FIFO. Machine.ERT is the constructor of the UART object, which is used to initialize the corresponding channels and pins. The first parameter ID is to use the UART channel, which can be 0 or 1. The second parameter baud rate is the baud rate used. The third parameter bits is the data bit length, only 8 bits are valid at this stage. The fourth parameter parity is whether to use the parity bit. The fifth parameter stop is the stop bit length. The sixth and seventh parameters are TX and RX, which are the transceiver pins and should be pin objects. The UART.any function is used to detect whether there is data in the current receive buffer, returns 1 if there is data in the receive buffer, otherwise returns 0. The UART.read function is used to read strings, n bytes parameter, if n bytes is specified, read at most so many bytes, otherwise read as much data as possible. Read line function, read a line, ending with a new line character. Read into function, store the read string in the specified buffer. The parameter buff is used to specify the cache. nbytes has the same function as the bytes parameter of the read function above. Write function, used to send a string and return the number of bytes sent. The parameter buff is the string to be sent. Send break function, send a stop state to the bus and pull down the bus for 13 bit time. We need a Pico eval board and two USB to micro USB cables. We can see the schematic of the Pico eval board. The above two pins of GPIO0 and GPIO1 are connected to the RXD and TXD of the UART of the onboard USB to UAT chip CP2102. This time we need to use CP2102 and Pico for UART communication. Finally came to our programming part. In the first two lines, we imported the corresponding library, then we initialized UART channel 0. The baud rate was 115,200. Use GPIO0 and GPIO1 as the TXD and RXD pins, respectively, for UART communication, and initialized GPIO25 as the output pin. The pin is used to drive the onboard LED light, and then send out the corresponding prompt information by UART. In the loop, 
We use any function of the UART class to determine whether the information is received and then obtain the received data through the read function to determine whether the read data is character 1 or character 0. If it is character 1 or character 0, turn on or off the LED light, otherwise, re-output the prompt information. Now we come to the last part, the practical part. Here we use two micro USB cables to connect the Pico and Pico eval board to the computer. Here we have installed the driver of CP2102 and opened our window assistant. When we plug in the Pico eval board, a new COM port will be refreshed on the serial port assistant. The COM port is described as Silicon Labs CP210X USB to UART bridge, which is the COM port of our CP2102. Now we choose a baud rate of 115,200 and open the window. If the baud rate is not selected correctly, it will cause a communication failure. Then we open Thani and run our program. In the serial port assistant, we can see the corresponding prompt information. Now we enter 0 or 1 respectively, and we can see if the LED light on the Pico is turned on or off. If we enter a character other than 0 or 1, we will be prompted to enter 0 or 1. If you like this video, please give it a like. See you next time.